Hello and welcome to Getting Clean on the Prairies. We are downstairs in my indoor growing space here and I've just taken another little harvest of some tomatoes off of my cracky plant here. Um, but the purpose of today's video is to start talking about getting our indoor uh, seedlings started for our outdoor garden this spring. And I wanted to just start out by showing you how I plan my um, indoor seedlings and when I plant things and how I kind of figure that out. And uh, one of the first things you need to do when you are um, planning your um, plantings is to figure out when your uh, last frost date is depending on where you live. So I'm going to just show you quickly on the computer how you can Google that to find out when your last frost date is and um, then we'll take it from there. Okay, so at your Google screen, just type in what's my last day of frost and uh, that should take you to a website that the Old Farmers Almanac has. And on that screen there, you can just type in your city, your state, province, postal code, click on the search button and it will bring up for you your uh, last frost date, your first frost date in the fall and also the number of days growing season in your area. Okay, so once you have determined um, roughly when your last frost date is, that's when you can start kind of planning to figure out when you should start your seedlings. And I always recommend using a calendar. It's, it's the easiest way to go for sure. Um, according to my growing zone um, on that we just looked at, the last frost date is around May 15. Um, I've always planted my garden on the May long weekend, which is the Victoria Day weekend in, here in Canada. And uh, my grandmother, that was always what we did on the long weekend in May was plant garden. So I have, I've kind of used that as my date, which is a little bit later in, into May, but on the calendar this year, it would be somewhere in the week of May 23rd. So that's the date, the week that I'm gonna use as my planting date. And then I'm gonna just count back on the calendar here, I actually write in one, two, three, so I can figure out how many weeks back I need to go for certain uh, seeds. So when I'm looking at my seeds here now, um, that's where you can just determine what week you need to plant them. Um, petunias is something that I'm gonna try, and I know they have a long indoor growing period. Um, they say at least 10 to 12 weeks before you transplant them outside. So that takes me all the way back. Uh, week 12 is at the end of February. So I will be trying to start petunias the last week of February or maybe into the first week of March. So I just write it in here to keep track of that that's what I'm going to start planting in those weeks. Um, celery was another thing that has a long indoor um, starting period. It's also 10 to 12 weeks. So. I've written that I'm going to try starting it um, around the 7th of March. Um, tomatoes and peppers are probably my favorite thing. And it's hard to just stick with one or two. As you can see, I have so many here. And tomatoes and peppers are usually around six to eight weeks, um, according to these packages. So the end of March <clears throat> is where eight week mark is from my last frost date. So there will be a lot of seed starting going on end of March, first couple weeks of April, getting ready for the spring garden. Um, another thing that is only a few weeks before frost date is my melons here. I have some uh, watermelon and cantaloupe and they are three to four weeks before um, moving outdoors. So that will take us to the end of April here. So I have marked down cantaloupe and watermelon to be started indoors. And then by the time we get to the last frost date here, it's time to plant the outdoor garden um, or any of my direct sowing uh, seeds such as uh, corn, cucumbers, carrots, peas. Usually those I just put right into the garden as soon as I can. can. So, I start to just kind of watch the weather and monitor, you know, how wet it is. Sometimes we have a cool spring, sometimes we have a, a warm spring. So around that time is when I'll be doing my direct sowing. Things like potatoes, um, 
I like to try and stick them in the in the soil a little earlier than the last frost day because they can usually handle that. So, so I really like using a calendar like this. After um, I've moved out to the garden, um, I take my calendar and hang it up in the green in my garden shed, and I just use it to record any further things that I may plant in the garden. Sometimes you stick stuff in later. I write down rainfall, um, different weather reports kind of throughout the summer. So I just find it a great uh, way to keep track of things. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, another thing to take note of that I, when you're looking at your um, growing zone and your frost date, it'll, it'll tell you how many growing days you have approximately between the two frost dates. And for here, it's 126 days. So when you look at your um, seeds, when you're considering planting them, always make sure to check and see what the, um, the date to, ma to uh, maturity is. For something like um, <clears throat> this watermelon here, for example, it has quite a long period of um, growing, which is 80 to 85 days. That's pretty long for my zone. Most of my stuff I try to stick around 50 60 75 days so that means um and that's that those days are from the date of transplant so that's the day that you put them into the garden not the day you start the seeds and um i find you know anything in the 60 to 75 is is your best time because you'll get it into the garden and hopefully by early july mid july you're um you're harvesting some of your vegetables already so that's about it for this video today. Um, I hope you will keep um, following me along as we start st start our seeds indoors. Um, I hope to make videos of all the things I've started and what I've used to start them, the kind of grow lights I'm using. So I hope you will keep following along with me. If you haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can be notified when the next video is up on the channel. So thank you for watching and happy gardening.